Hey, this is Father Robert from Gadget at thetechstop.net. I'm here with David Flynn, the CTO of Fusion IO. We're here at Interop 2009 in Mandalay Bay. Now, uh, he's got a interesting display. If you take a look over here, I, I, I'm looking at, I think, what could only be described as an ADD <laughs> wet dream. We like to call this our uh, bug zapper because people walk by and they just get sucked in and have to stop and watch it. What exactly am I looking at? 1,000 something or other right, videos? Uh, over 1,000 video feeds, full quality DVD being decoded by 256 CPU cores, 16 high performance graphics cards, but one storage device. A and that, single storage uh, component is able to feed all of that performance. And I'm betting that one storage device is what you've brought to the show. That's right. Okay, tell me a little bit about it. What, what exactly do we have? What does it do? And, and well, most importantly, where can I get one? Oh, actually, I should grab this here. Sorry, guys. Should have had it ahead of time. So, this is the IO Drive. Mm -hmm. This is the IO Drive Duo. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, this has one module. This has two. This guy goes up to a third of a terabyte. And as you might imagine, two thirds of a terabyte, 640 gigs. But what makes it unique is that it can do 200,000 IOs per second. So What's the maximum transfer rate here? The maximum transfer rate for this guy is 1.5, 1.6 gigabytes a second of bandwidth. Uh, okay, just, just for the, the, the viewers at home, uh, compare that to, oh, I don't know, your average hard drive. Uh, well, a hard drive does maybe 100 megabytes a second. This can move a full quality DVD in roughly, oh, two, three seconds. So what you're saying is that all of that can run off of this simultaneously. That's right. What we put in this little glass box over here is uh, is one of these devices serving it out over the network and feeding all 16 servers with their 256 CPUs. Well, what's the interface on this? The interface on this one happens to be InfiniBand, mm -hmm. but uh, could just as well be uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet. Now, behind you, I, I know I've seen this. I've seen this. Rays, racks and racks of arrays <laughs> exactly. that do storage, but there seems to be something missing. So what That's am I right. looking at? We took all of the disks out because uh, we wanted to prove the point that the storage is all coming from this one device. There is not a single disk drive in any of these servers. Not only is the data being fed uh, for the video wall from that component, but the operating system image, they're all network booting from that device as well. So this is a nice little poignant display that shows you that essentially all of this is replaced by that. Exactly. Because what we've done is we have taken a storage area network, one of those massive arrays of disk drives and fiber channel switches and all of that expense, we've miniaturized it and made it out of silicon. This one component has 200 little pieces of NAND flash as opposed to putting hundreds of disk drives in a big rack with all the fiber channel switching. So we've miniaturized it and put it in the server in place of where the host bus adapter for the fiber channel would have been. So we just shrink the sand, put it where the adapter would have come out. Now, obviously a system like this is, would be great for something like, well, video on demand or, or for any high Precisely. quality, high performance video operation that yep. requires a, a lot of transactions, that requires a lot of throughput. Right. But database, uh, databases, data warehousing, right. business analytics, Video just happens to be one that's very visual, so we right. use it here. But uh, the, the, some of the most valuable things are around database and transaction processing, allowing businesses to, to get more valuable information out of their raw data. And that means feeding that raw data into their servers at a much more rapid rate than they could otherwise. Now, I know a big concern when I've been building data centers is as we add more and more storage arrays, the power consumption goes way, way up. Well. What's the power consumption like on one of these? I mean, one of those guys is, uh, you know, uh, 20 watts, <laughs> right? Compared to That's a not storage even a hard drive. No, if you annualize it, it's really amazing because to run a storage area network that has anywhere near the performance of just one of these devices, it's roughly the carbon footprint of 16 SUVs on the road for a year. <laughs> and of course, one of these running full time is like, you know, maybe a ceiling fan or pedaling around a tricycle, that's how much power it uses. So in other words, this should be, a, this should be eligible for an environmental bailout, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just get your government subsidy, come and get one basically for free. <laughs>
Well, uh, David, I, I have to say, we're blown away. That, uh, this is one of the most eye-catching displays at Interop. Oh, thank you. And the fact that, I mean, it's real time that you're showing us that you're actually doing it, I mean, that's just phenomenal. <laughs> so thank you. Thank it was you my pleasure. Much. Nice to meet you. And uh, where can they find out more about this project? www.fusionio.com. Fantastic. FusionIO.com. And remember, go to thetextop.net if you want to find out all of our episodes. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you. <laughs>